somewhere to go. Good evening. Welcome to the Don't March 13th that. meeting of My the Bauma is. Conservation Commission. Please silence your electronic devices, and if you're gonna have a private conversation, please take it outside. We don't have any any minutes, huh? Request for determination of applicability first up. Denisa and Sheldon Wagner, 46 Gosnold Road, Woods Hole, Mass, for permission to reconstruct deck into a porch. Mr. Chair, the staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three determination under the bylaw. Resource area, area boundaries are not confirmed by this RDA. So moved. So moved. Mrs. Kalaris, second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Next up, Andrew Schiff, 102 Nashawina Street, West Falmouth, Mass, for permission to upgrade to a Title V septic system. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Chair, the staff recommends a negative two determination under the state and, then and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed by this RDA. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Michael Simpson, 28 Blue Shutters Lane, North Falmouth, Mass, for permission to enclose existing deck and patio. Mr. Lynch. Mr. Chair, the staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed by this RDA. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call for the vote. All those in favor aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Ronald Simmons, 14 Ridge Road, North Falmouth, Mass, for permission to remove 16 trees. Mr. Chair, the staff recommends a continuance until the 27th. So moved. So moved. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> we have a couple motions, a couple seconds. Continuance Take of 327. All those in favor aye. say aye. 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 Excuse me, is that the 27th? Correct. Thank you. Eleanor and Philip Bouvier, 359 Edgewater Drive East, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct a two-car garage and expand the driveway. Mr. Chair, the staff recommends a negative two determination under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed by this RDA. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, a call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Kevin's out of here. All right, request for notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. First up. Blue Flag Development, LLC, 836 Palmer Ave, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to redevelop the existing campground, including upgrading existing septic to meet Title V regulations, install airstream campers, install a rain garden, remove invasive species, and restore wetland with native species and all associated clearing, landscaping, grading, and excavating. And for the record, Kevin is recused from this hearing. Uh, good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Brendan Mullaney from Bracken Engineering. Uh, here with me tonight is uh, Teresa Sprague from Blue Flax Design, uh, who worked with us on this project, and attorney Eliza Cox from Nutter McLennan & Fish, a uh, law firm in Hyannis. Uh, the proposed uh, project before you tonight is the uh, redevelopment of the uh, Sipawissic Campground property that is located at 836 Palmer Avenue. 
Uh, just for a brief recap of the uh, permitting that has already taken place on the project, it has been before the ZBA. Uh, there is a continued hearing with the ZBA next Thursday evening. Uh, it's been before the planning board who approved the project uh, last evening. And it was before the Board of Health who approved the project uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, so you guys are the final ones we're coming to see and uh, we're excited about the project. So just a, let me zoom up to the top. Uh, this is the Falmouth GIS uh, map. And when we first started looking at the property, when we looked at the DEP wetland layer, uh, there was no wetland shown on the, the state layer. But when we looked at your GIS map, we did notice that there is this small wetland uh, in the southwestern portion of the property directly adjacent to the Shining Sea bikeway. So for a reference, uh, the property here is shown in orange. Uh, it's west of 28. And uh, just to the west of the property is the Little Sipawissett Marsh. It is separated again by the, uh, by the Shining Sea Bikeway. This is the current configuration of the site. It is uh, operated as a seasonal campground facility. Uh, it's been in operation as a campground uh, since we believe around the 1920s, uh, potentially even earlier. The current owners have operated it in this manner since 1961. The current configuration is a number of uh, structures, both living quarters and cabins that are rented out seasonally, uh, as well as uh, 122 camper and or tent sites uh, for the campers using the property. In uh, this existing condition plan, the yellow uh, depicts structures and the blue is basically the existing uh, camper and or tent sites on the property. The area of concern um, for the commission is this uh, small isolated wetland that again is located adjacent to the Shining Sea bikeway. As you can sort of see from this and you'll be able to see from uh, the other plan that the site really does drain uh, in westerly orientation and uh, the majority of the site does drain uh, down towards this wetland and that uh, had to be taken into consideration when designing the wastewater facilities as well as the stormwater facilities uh, for the project, and I'll explain that more in detail in a minute. This is the overall proposed site layout, just to give you um, an idea of what's going on in the rest of the site. It's the same basic orientation that currently exists in terms of access, in terms of roadways around the property. Uh, the main difference is that the parking is now going to be concentrated uh, in a number of lots along Palmer Avenue rather than at the sites themselves, so there will be no vehicular traffic uh, going through the site. Uh, that has been reviewed, uh, again, by the Planning Board and is currently before the, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Again, this is the wetland uh, of concern for tonight. These are just a few photographs to give you an idea what the area looks like. Uh, very disturbed uh, historically, presumably from the, both the installation of the railroad and just uh, over the years. Um, when we went to investigate the, the wetland itself, what it appears is that the hydrologic influence is really from poor drainage in the stormwater that runs into the wetland from the majority of the site. Uh, we took hand augers within the wetland itself and we actually dug some test pits uh, for the stormwater design adjacent to the wetland within some existing campsites and we found real, no real evidence of a seasonal high groundwater table. The material that's within the wetland is very silty, mucky and drains very slowly and we believe that's why it has taken on some wetland characteristics. But in terms of a, a seasonal high groundwater table we were not able to indicate the elevation of that. This is another look at it with the bike path in the background. As you can see, it rises steeply up to the bike path and the main wetland area in the center here. Uh, this is the current existing path uh, adjacent to the wetland. Uh, this will be reconfigured. Uh, all the asphalt within this area is actually gonna be removed and reclaimed and all the interior access roads within the whole site uh, will be gravel, um, so no additional pavement. And this is the, if you've ever been down the bike path, this is a little access ramp uh, with the wetland right over in this area here. This is a detail sheet uh, 
of the work that is within both the 50 and 100 foot buffer. So for reference, the wetland is shown in green and the 50 and 100 foot buffer zones are shown uh, in blue dashed lines. Some of the major components of the project that are within the jurisdictional area have been outlined in red. So for a rundown of those, uh, three of the proposed uh, trailer sites are within the 100 foot buffer zone or at least partially. These are on existing campus sites now that will be reutilized for uh, the new facilities. Uh, within the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone on this side is the control building uh, for the amphidrome wastewater system and a bike storage shed that has been incorporated into that building. The remainder of the wastewater system is just outside of the, the 100 foot buffer zone and the reason that it had to be located down in this area was strictly due to the topography on the site and the Title V requirements. We originally wanted to put all the facilities up in the northeast corner of the, the site where the leach field is going. Um, but Title V requires you to, that you can only pump 25% of the untreated effluent to the septic tank. So in order to accomplish that, uh, we, we could not have accomplished that based on the topography of the site, which, which grades steeply down from east to west. And so it was determined that the only way to adequately design the system in accordance with Title V was to put the collection system uh, fed by gravity down to this area where it will enter a septic tank, uh, go through the amphidrome treatment system, a clear water tank, and then be pumped uh, all the way back up to the northeast corner of the site where it will be infiltrated uh, in the leach field. So there's no infiltration and no leaching down in this area, but in order to, to properly collect the effluent, uh, we had to design and place these structures um, within this area. We did keep them outside of the 50 foot buffer, but based on the, the topography and uh, existing topography, we had to put the control building um, within that buffer zone. On this side of the wetland, and this is within the 50 foot buffer zone, this is a proposed rain garden. And we again tried to design this so it would be outside of the 50 foot buffer zone or outside of the 100 foot buffer zone altogether. But based on the drainage requirements, both from the town of Falmouth Engineering Department and uh, Mass DEP stormwater management standards, uh, it was determined that the amount of runoff that was coming into this area, we had to design uh, this structure here. One of the components of the rain garden, and we had a lot of discussion regarding this is that we felt we were actually going to be robbing the the wetland of its water source if uh, we met all these standards to the maximum extent practicable which we are required to do and since the the wetland is mostly fed by the the, the stormwater flow that's coming into it from the entire site we've designed this with an under drain that will capture treated uh, the treated stormwater and then flow through a pipe down into the wetland so that the wetland will actually stay wet. Now without this component it is our belief that the wetland would probably dry up or at least uh, not have the the hydric conditions that it has now. And just to give you a little idea what that looks like this is a cross-section uh, of the rain garden. So the water comes in, infiltrates down through the bioretention soil, through the pea stone, and into the drainage stone and this pipe here would be a perforated pipe wrapped in filter fabric and that would then convey the water, the treated storm water uh, that, that didn't infiltrate you know, uh, on the sides of that down back into the wetland where we have a small little uh, splat, rip wrap splash pad. Um, let me see if I can zoom in. Basically just a little sump pit here so that as the water comes in, uh, if there is any, happens to be any small amounts of sediment that could be trapped and then the water would be allowed to go back into the wetland. Um, another component of this project, which Teresa will, will explain in more detail, is we're proposing to restore or remove all the invasive and nuisance vegetation that uh, is within the wetland and do a full wetland restoration project and that includes uh, full replanting uh, of the rain garden. So the rain garden is going to act as a, you know, just as much as a vegetated buffer 
to that wetland as it is a, a stormwater facility to provide uh, treatment uh, for the stormwater before entering the wetland. So this particular component, well, you know, it might be unique. Uh, this is a unique situation, and it is our opinion that, you know, without it, um, it, it's possible that the wetland could really start to lose some of the, the hydrology that's influenced it. Uh, this, again, is the cross-section. These are basically just stormwater details uh, that were included in case uh, anyone had interest in them. And so at this point, I will turn it over to Teresa, who can further explain uh, the actual uh, restoration that we're proposing uh, within the, the wetland itself and within the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, good evening, Teresa Sprague for Flex Design. Um, just get this. Um, basically, what we have here is about um, a 20,200 square foot area, includes the isolated wetland as well as the A and B buffer zones to the wetland. Um, the rain garden and surrounding A zone area to be restored um, is about 4,150 square feet. Invasive presence on the site includes knotweed, vine honeysuckle, shrub honeysuckle, English ivy, black locust, Asiatic bittersweet, um, porter privet, and porcelain berry. Um, what we're proposing here for invasive species management, you've heard before, a mix of selective herbicide, mechanical, and hand removal. In our land management plan, we were very specific about the machinery that we were proposing to use on this site would include um, a mini excavator as well as a walk-behind skid steer um, to help remove some of the um, invasive vegetation down from the wetland area. Um, any native vegetation, if any, to be uncovered, we did not see much in the way of uh, native vegetation with the exception of rubus and um, greenbrier um, throughout the area, um, would be flush cut and allowed to regenerate um, on the site. We are proposing to manage the rubus and the greenbrier um, simply to reduce competition as we're trying to get um, a new plant community established here. In addition to the invasive vegetation, four oaks um, will be removed from the B zone to accommodate the, um, the um, septic structure that Brendan was just talking about. Um, we will be replacing those um, with three red maples and one white oak um, that are shown here on the plan. So the goal here is to really, um, over the three to seven year management period, is to, um, is to support an emergent wetland with a wet um, meadow community um, surrounded by a shrub thicket that over time through natural succession would be allowed to colonize the wetland area. <coughs> the purpose for um, proposing to start with the um, wet meadow and um, emergent wetland veg vegetation, mostly herbaceous in that area, is twofold. Um, one is to um, just support more of a natural succession process through the area, but also to allow for some maintenance in the area if you had a chance to go by. In addition to the invasive vegetation, there's a lot of styrofoam, plastic, garbage that I think has just come in there over time from both the campground and possibly from the bike path just um, above. So I think there will be um, some maintenance that's going to be required. We are showing a little bit of a maintenance access. Again, this is only for maintenance purpose. This isn't a path to access the area, but just an area where we're allowing um, access into this area so that we can um, clean this as necessary um, as it moves along. So as part of restoring this, and again, we're thinking this is a three to seven year uh, management goal. At that point, um, we'd be able to stand back and let natural succession occur and let shrubs that are going to move down into this wetland area um, play in the thicket um, as would happen in a normal process. Um, as Brendan pointed out, the topography here is hugely varied. Um, there's some really steep slopes on this site. Um, they're all draining down into this wetland. The soils around the wetland ex itself compared to appear to be very well drained. Um, sandy loam, as Brendan pointed out, it looks like sediment in this area that's really holding um, sort of a mucky condition that's allowing um, water to, um, to remain in that area um, and provide those wetland conditions. Um, so what we're looking at here is um, restoration with, after the invasive species are removed, the banks um, to the 
um, wetland will be seeded and then blanketed with um, biodegradable erosion control blanket in order to stabilize the area while the restoration planting is completed. Um, we're looking at 2,279 herbaceous plugs along with 338 shrubs, six service berry trees, and then the four, um, the three maples and the one oak tree um, that we had described earlier. The plants that we're proposing are a mix of upland and wetland um, fact wet species, including bayberry, summer sweet, arrowwood by Burnham, black chokeberry, winterberry, holly, as well as um, some of Jennifer's favorite sweet fern, um, which we are proposing up along the edge of the road um, just to provide a little bit of a transition area and some fragrant sumac, which just does a really good job of holding some of these slopes um, on the steeper areas. So I think um, with that, it's a fairly straightforward restoration plan. As Brendan pointed out, we see the rain garden acting just as part of the vegetated buffer. Um, again, required for um, stormwater management purposes here on the site, but really acting in conjunction with the rest of the restored um, A zone to provide um, just that buffering into the, um, into the wetland area. I'm happy to answer any questions about the proposed wetland restoration. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, staff doesn't have too many concerns. We met on site. We've met with Graph and Engineering multiple times on this project to look at the location of that control shed and the rain garden and the, and the concept to use uh, the rain garden in this, in this situation. Um, so we're well aware of that. I'm not going to pick on Teresa about her use of sweet fern. There's very little in I the overall. Sure <laughs> you haven't, but I, I understand how you're using it, and yep. I, I do understand um, why. So um, I'll make very specific findings to that. Okay. Um, so right now, I don't have any questions. We met out there last last week, mm -hmm. last Friday. Yeah. Yep. And we viewed the site. It's, I think it's going to be an improvement going to be a nice access point from the campground to the bike path in this area. Um, so, Brendan, anything? You got it. I mean, our jurisdiction on this site, or our jurisdiction in this project is very, very small compared to the overall project. Mm -hmm. Brenda, did you go over what the campground is going to consist of with the board, just so they know what the, the, tra the Airstream Sure. Components? Yeah, so as I had stated earlier, the uh, on site now there's 122 camp sites, which are a mixture of trailer sites, tent sites, um, and also uh, the cabins. Um, what is proposed is 108 sites, uh, 98 of which will be, let's see if I can zoom in, uh, these Airstream trailers um, that will be um, they won't be permanent, so they will be able to be moved if necessary, but they will have these little uh, outdoor entertainment areas around them. And then there is 10 of these tent sites. That's what I'm looking at. Uh, and they've also included, um, I believe, six uh, ADA accessible uh, facilities, both a couple of tent sites and I believe at least four of the Airstream units. Those are all up in the vicinity of the clubhouse due to the topography on the site and the required slopes for ADA access. Um, so that will be what is proposed. And as I said, the, the goal of this originally was to minimize the amount of clearing, minimize the amount of uh, earthwork that was gonna be necessary and to try to utilize the existing campground and layout to the maximum extent <coughs> that we could. Um, Obviously, there will have to be some regrading and some realignment of some of the existing paths and roadways throughout the site, but for the most part, the layout is, is pretty consistent with what's out there right now if you had a chance to visit the site. Uh, in addition, all the, the structures, with the exception of the white birdhouse with the red roof, if you've seen that, um, will be removed, and a, a central clubhouse facility uh, is proposed. Right, right here. This is uh, the, this will be one large uh, clubhouse facility, and then there is a, a large sort of communal fire pit and uh, gathering type space behind the clubhouse uh, proposed. And again, most of this layout is, is a, as I said, is pretty consistent with uh, with what's out there right now. 
Um, and I think we've done a good job with uh, particularly the, the whole concept, and I think with the uh, restoration of that wetland. Um, I think that wetland probably originally was part of Sipawissick Marsh before the railroad line was put through. Do you have any idea what the elevation difference is for, between the marsh on one side and that? In the wetland? Yeah. Um. It looked like you, my topo, one of the topos I looked at said eight feet. Is that where the water level is? The, uh, the bottom of the wetland is right around eight. Um, and so. So it's about four or five feet above the marsh on the other side. <coughs> Likely at the at the uh, you know the the average grade of the marsh, I would say yeah. And and we did do as I said, we did uh, a number of test pits throughout the site as was required by the engineering department for the stormwater uh, drainage calculations. And we did two right where we were putting the rain garden, and we didn't find seasonal uh, high groundwater table to about seven and a half. So um, it, it's definitely lower, but there obviously probably was some influence from the marsh at some. Are you at all concerned, given some of the grades there, that by eliminating asphalt paving and using a, I assume, dense grade and that kind of stuff, that you're not enhancing the amount of erosion, <coughs> erosion potential there? It, it's definitely you know been considered as to what the final material for the paths is uh, going to be. Um, but one of their tenants is that you know they want to try to make the space as natural as possible. Um, they could have left some of these no, I, I, paved access good. areas, um, you know, from a purely um, you know maintenance standpoint. It you know it, it, there might be some increased maintenance for it. Um, but we have designed the the stormwater management um, you know very thoroughly both to meet no, those. No, I know you are, and I I you know aesthetically I think going to a, some sort of a gravel surface is much nicer looking. I'm just, it's, my concern is that some of those grades on those roads are so steep that you may actually have more erosion potential in heavy rains. Sure. You know, well, you wait and see, I guess. It, it was a consideration and we did bring that up with, with the applicant. Um, and, but you know, they, they're really, um, dedicated to that. They have a couple of these other facilities, none on the East Coast. There's one in Russian River. Um, there's a new one opening up in Yosemite, right near Yosemite, and that's one of their main, you know, the company's uh, goals is to, you know, no pavement, unless absolutely necessary. So there is going to be a little bit near the clubhouse to facilitate some of the access, uh, the ADA access. Um, but even these, uh, the parking lots in front um, are all gravel. Um, but based on the requirements of the engineering department, we actually had to model uh, all of our stormwater uh, calculations as these being a pavement, just because you, you can't presume the infiltration that you're gonna get through the gravel uh, okay. surfaces. You'll find out, I guess. So. <laughs> if you have to deal with it, you'll deal with it. Sure. Okay, no other questions. And, and I think that restoration problem, <coughs> the proposal on the, on the marsh is nice. well done. Yeah, I think it was Jen told me about what your design with the rain garden to have the excess water go into the, the wetland, and so it's it's a nice job. My, my only question was completely based on having gone to England this summer and recently being over in Europe. For your driveway, this has nothing to do with our jurisdiction. But the way you have the traffic, the upper corner there, it goes to the left, around to the right. And I, this is just, this, when I go into DPW, I always go around the right. And I said to Jim McLaughlin one time, I said, isn't there a system here? I said, people go every different way. And he said, that's right, they do. So I, They're expecting a lot of, uh, Guests from Great Britain. I guess. Great Britain. All right. <laughs> so I, and the other thing I, I want to say is that speaking of Great Britain, I've met people from Europe who have come to this campground for years and years, and, mm -hmm. and it's nice that we're keeping a facility like this. So that's my comment. Thank you. I think you, you and Teresa both did a nice job.
She no, she looked around to <laughs> she looked around to, to get a compliment. <laughs> going to enter this no one there's no vehicle traffic within the, the site is that what you said yeah so the uh so you park your car there and then walk to your yeah they actually give you a little uh red radio flyer wagon for your stuff that's one of their other um sort of stick company yeah there. and then you and they also they will have a number of golf carts not for every site but if you needed uh, assistance with access or with uh transporting your um you know log meter or Camping supplies or whatever it's going to be. Right. So that that is actually another one of their. You know, they ha they have a list of <coughs> their company. Um, you know, tenants and one of them is they they don't want vehicles in and around the camping areas. So the idea is that you could park your vehicle. You know, on a Friday and not see it again <coughs> until Sunday. So. So if you send your grandson down there to be a floor. There you go. You could do that. Right? The uh, yeah the the current managers were were very nice. This opportunity that they, they had to come up for a meeting with. But um, in that area where the soil is, uh, in, in, <coughs> in the wetland area, the, the soil composition is unusual, I would say. I, I, it was a sandy, virtually quicksand. I, I, you know, Within the wetland itself? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of it. I think is sediment buildup because right now there's it you know, must be. Er, and, uh, you know, it erodes into there um, from all the surrounding area. So it's a combination of, you know, a lot of silty, fine type sediment that that turns into that sort of mucky, you know, um, poor drainage soil. But also all the sand that is coming off of those slopes that are up there. So it's really just a combination of everything that's running into the the wetland. Caught me by surprise, but you might say, um, but it caught my shoe by surprise. Um, yeah, I think this is a great plan. It takes it's, it's done extes extensive work to, to revegetate the area, and I, 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 and I hope for the best. This is a, one of our assets. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Peter. My initial reaction was very positive, but I just wanted to confirm the water flows uh, in the marsh area, the wetland area. Where does the water go currently? Does it go down uh, you can see that, yeah. underground, or does it seep through the Shining Sea Bikeway, or where does it go now? Well, it's you know it's a, probably a combination, but right now as it sits in that the wetland area, um, it's it just drains very poorly, and that's what's created a lot of these um, wetland conditions. Um, so. What we're doing is intercepting all of it before it gets into the wetland. It will be treated in accordance with the you know, appropriate stormwater standards. And then, as I was describing, it's sort of a unique situation, and that's why we are actually putting an under drain um, here under the, the rain garden so that the water that's treated, um, you know, instead of infiltrating back into the ground, will actually flow right into the, the wetland and actually provide some of those uh, hydraulic or hydrologic characteristics. Now, uh, the water that drains from the overall site going into the gravel or crushed stone or whatever, uh, that silt or buildup uh, is not supposed to affect the functioning of the for how many years? Two years, five years, ten years? Are, are you saying like these um, gravel trenches along the side of the road? Yes. The yes. The, the, uh, yeah, the, the treatment area for the uh, water coming down uh, through the site that was building up the silt in the uh, marshland area. Sure. 
Will that need maintenance? Yes. So uh, right here, um, uh, this is a, what's called a flared end structure, and then with this little uh, riprap pad, and this is a sediment four bay. So the sediment that is within that stormwater will be collected in this area. The water then comes into the, the wetland itself. So this four bay will definitely have to be maintained and cleaned, and that's part of the overall operation and maintenance of any stormwater system. Okay. Now, uh, I think I have it uh, that on the west wastewater treatment, mm -hmm. uh, none of the effluents, effluents will be uh, going out to the marshland. Oh, right? absolutely not. No, he, that's that's no, that's that's the, the old days. Um, no, so it just to go back real quickly. So this is uh, showing where that water will be coming in. This is a uh, sediment four bay. So this is a check dam. So as the the water comes in, the the sediment <coughs> settles here, and then comes into the actual rain garden itself. Um, so that will definitely have to be maintained, um, along with the other. You know, there's uh, additional ones of those on the site. Uh, in terms of the wastewater, um, so how this system works, this is an amphidrome system. Um, it's a, a biologically active filter that uh, helps to attenuate the excess nitrogen uh, in the effluent. Uh, so the gravity uh, collection system will come into the anoxic tank, or basically just a, a standard septic tank, um, which is... Uh, this one here then comes to the amphidrome system. That's where the uh, the treatment takes place. Then comes into a uh, clearing tank where the water further clears up and any additional suspended solids come out of it. And then this is a uh, pump with a force main that comes all the way up um, to the northeast corner of the site below one of those parking areas where there's two large leach fields that are composed of a uh, Presby and Virotech um, passive uh, infiltration um, leach field. So all of the, the treated effluent wastewater will be infiltrated back up at the northeast corner of the site. Now, during the treatment process, what type of nitrogen level will be uh, a result? Um, there was a full report. Um, I don't know if I have the number right off the top of my head. Um, it's a substantial improvement over the existing conditions. Um, let's see if I, I just I don't want to tell you a number that will be stuck. In, you know, I, it's 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 low, and we could definitely provide that to you. Um, Stantec, um, who does a lot of the larger wastewater systems on Cape, uh, that's who was the the wastewater consultant on the project. Do you have a field that uh, can? the old level to the new level, like a 50% reduction or? Yeah, I think it it's even uh, uh, greater than that. Let me see if it's, uh, it's uh, so these were the, um, to profile the system. It's definitely a substantial improvement, yeah, um, and I should have what that. my point was. Yep. Okay, no further questions. Thank you. Has that system been approved by the Board of Health? Yes, it has. Any further discussion? Any discussion from the public? Any comments from the public? I'm Ralph Stephen. I live at 80 Barnabas Road. I'm on a bi-rotary uh, project in the northwest corner. And uh, sorry I missed some of the planning committee meetings. My wife and I were in town. 
I did send an email to the uh, planning committee ex expressing a couple of my concerns. I haven't had an answer yet, so um, sorry for wasting your time. But uh, I'm a little anxious about the nitrogen loading of the marsh. I, I swim off uh, Woodneck Beach from June to October. And uh, I've noticed over the last 20 years that I've been living there that the uh, quality of the beach has deteriorated. The eelgrass has died. There's not as much marine life uh, swimming off the beach. And uh, it's hard to imagine that some of that deterioration isn't due to uh, loading by uh, septic systems of uh, abutting properties to the marsh. And I understand Title V isn't enough to uh, to control the nitrogen loading, so the fact that it meets Title V standards doesn't doesn't seem to mean very much. And uh, I don't know; it'd be a real shame if uh, the marsh gets worse than it already is. We should be taking steps to improve the water quality in the marsh. I haven't done a lot of homework on this. It's my understanding. Someone mentioned to me that the existing campground pumps a lot of the sewage off the property. So the fact that this, putting all the, you know, having the drainage bed on the property, I just can't understand how that can be an improvement over shipping all the waste off the property entirely. So, um, yeah, that's my, that's my concern. I'm, Just don't have a warm feeling that the marsh is being protected. Thank you, sir. Address that. Um, so, sir, I'd be happy to provide you with uh, the analysis that was done in regards to the existing and proposed nitrogen loading. Um, but currently, the the site is serviced by a series of uh, cesspools and old leach pits. Um, there's, I think, 10 to 12 on the site. Um, and they pump from some of the existing trailers in right now, and then they dump them into these cesspools. And so what we are proposing um, is a state-of-the-art nitrogen removal innovative alternative system that is going to vastly improve uh, the nutrient loading that's coming from this site and the treatment of, of the wastewater. So. Um, this, what, what is being proposed is basically the top of the line system that you can have f for uh, around this type of uh, daily flow um, in terms of nitrogen removal. So there's also a condition in the, uh, the Board of Health approval, um, I believe, that stated that in a year or six months or a year, there'll have to be testing done on the effluent and it'll have to meet a certain standard. And if not, then additional components may have to be added to this for even more treatment um, than what is being proposed initially. So uh, it, it's definitely a significant improvement over what's there right now and what has been there. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Wait. <coughs> so this is the Conservation Commission. I just wonder, is, is there some quantitative uh, monitoring of the uh, nitrogen levels under the Sipwissant Marsh? Is that a routine we hope. Uh, measurement that's done? And if things get worse, we'll, we'll know whether it's getting worse or not? Repeat that question, sir. Is there? Do we know what the nitrogen levels are in Little Sipwissant Marsh? Can we monitor that? Are, are those measurements made the on a routine basis? The Conservation Department does not monitor that. I'm not sure who does, but that's information we can um, see if we can track down and provide to you. Well, I'm just wondering. I, mean, I know, how, some, how I know, know some people are monitoring it. It's not regularly it. done. I know we, that study that Arthur and I did yeah. in 2005 did, did a 72-hour 70, yep. uh, measuring every hour of nitrogen. So we do have data from then. And I can also tell you that um, on, at the time there. we did that study, there was a study by MDL, by Mitch Sobin, mm -hmm. looking at um, bacteria in, in different parts of the marsh, thinking that this might be a real hot spot for potential <coughs> human bacteria. 
This is this, the, the techniques that is, is um, they use, they basically they, they, they get samples of bacteria and then they, they find out all the DNA that's there and then they can identify which <coughs> have a human component and they found none off here. They were very surprised. When was that study done? That was done in 2005. Okay, so I think I think the, I think the water was pretty healthy in uh, 2005. It's, it's been deteriorating since then. That's that's the problem. We need to. Uh, yeah, but it, it's not. I mean, there are lots of other septic systems that are yes. here, and it's not just sep septic systems. I mean, there's been increased temperature at that time. There's there are flow issues because of sand that has been driven up the marsh. So there's a whole series of things that might contribute to degradation of water quality. But unless you actually have data to show that it's changed, we don't really know. Well, I think the gentleman mentioned earlier that if things got worse, there's things they could do to improve it, but how will we know if it's getting worse? Was my question. I believe you, met, you, yeah. you said something about if, if, if this is inadequate, you could you think you could do things better. It, that's not about testing the marsh. That's about testing the system that we'll be putting in to see if it's treating to the levels um, that we expect it to. Oh, I see. Yeah. Could no one be testing the marsh? I don't know. Um, pond, wa pond Watchers doesn't do anything with the nutrients, but I don't know whether there's a Pond Watcher. I don't know. Uh, I was just thinking. Site that. here. I can check. Buzzards Bay Coalition keeps track of water quality in different areas. And so you might look at their website because they probably do, and they kind of rank each of the areas each year. Okay. I mean, that's the only one that I know of, but they don't directly measure nitrogen levels. It's, 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 the thing is, it's a little tricky. You can't just go out and, and measure the water and know the nitrogen level because these things change. As the tie, as the water comes in and out, you, you you have to know what the temporal difference of these nutrients are. So I've I've got a, a personal memory of a twenty year time history with a nice, you know, seasonal smoothing to the, <laughs> to the time series, and mm -hmm. it's getting worse, and it's not getting better. And well, we should be we should taking steps we'll to making it better, we'll not not not, not, not maintaining the status quo. What, what that gentleman just expressed, if in fact the system they have now is replacing a series of cesspools that basically had no treatment, what's coming from this site is going to be better than what had been. But now you might, you might want to talk to all your neighbors who are in those areas who might want to change from cesspools, which they had when their houses were built, to to innovate, innovative yeah, alternative yeah. systems, and then you might see an improvement. Yeah. So a couple of things. The first thing is the cesspools that they've, they've been using in the past might have been might have been plugged, may not be functioning. They might have had to pump those cesspools. So we, we may not be looking at the, uh, over, over the last few years, we, it's, it's possible that a lot more of the sewage has been pumped off site than just what went into holding tanks. It essentially, this yeah, the cesspools I, I have, have no failed. They become they become holding tanks. But I'm but I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, it's a this is a complex issue, and there are lots of uh, people responsible for practices that have led to the degradation of our waters. Well, I when we moved to this property in '96. We were very conscientious and installed this Title V system that we thought was going to put an end to these environmental headaches. And now we find out it's inadequate. It's not treating the, uh, uh, the nitrogen adequately. And so I'm a little skeptical of, of new standards that may also be inadequate. That's, uh, I don't think this is a problem we're going to solve tonight. I understand. <laughs> <coughs> but thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Going in? Um, like you, sir, I've, uh, 
I'm obviously, I'm very concerned about what happens in that marsh. Uh, I live about a quarter of a mile from that site as the crow flies, and I've been there for 50 years. And uh, the water quality study that Betsy talks about was actually conducted on, on my property or part of my property, which is in that area. And I can say to you that the issues of nitrogen loading, not only in Blue Sipawisset Marsh, but in a lot of our estuaries are, are due to a, a number of factors, including septic systems, including fertilizer on lawns, and all of these things. And it's, it's a cumulative impact. You know, a little fertilizer by itself isn't a problem, but when you have as many homes as there are around Little Sipawisset Marsh, it becomes a problem. And um, this campground <coughs> has been there, I've been there for 50 years, the campground has been there twice that. But um, as Betsy said, and as the engineer pointed out, <coughs> they're putting a state-of-the-art system in there that's one of which one of the implications of which is that they, it's designed to reduce nitrogen loading by a significant amount. And, you know, the norm is a Title V system. And when people put Title V systems in, they think, oh, that's great. But the Title V systems do nothing to mitigate from nitrogen. So, you know, it, this is an improvement, and, and as a Someone who lives around there, I welcome that. I'm happy to see it. And I think that, you know, their restoration of this um, wetland and the rain garden and those kinds of things, with all of which is the focus of this hearing because this is the area that's within our jurisdiction. But that, those things taken together with the state-of-the-art septic system can be nothing but an improvement for, for that marsh. Um, we all hate to see change. You know, we wish things had stayed the way they are, but I think that what's being proposed here, and I know a lot of us who live around that area are concerned about it, but I think that what's, what's being proposed in its totality is an improvement over what's there, and certainly an improvement what, what might have been able to be there. We have a motion and a second, correct? That's correct. All right. Any more public comment? All those in favor of closing the hearing, take it under advisement, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Unanimous, so moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, I'm giving it. He missed the flower set. He missed the flower show for this. I know it's for it. You could tell I have one of your better ones. Huh? One of your better ones. You didn't go off on a rail. What can I say? No. Moving on. Right, yeah. Welcome back, Kevin. Thank you. Patrick and Phyllis McDevitt. I'm sorry, this is a continued hearing. Patrick and Phyllis McDevitt, 5 North Chop Lane, East Thomas, Mass. For permission to reconstruct existing stone riprap and incorporate new granite steps within riprap. Mr. Porcelli, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Record, my name is Michael Porcelli. I'm Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant. The applicant uh, filed a notice of intent <coughs> to do some work at the property, and it was originally uh, scheduled for a previous uh, evening, but we uh, made a decision to continue the hearing because of some feedback from Conservation Commission staff. So you have not heard this yet, even though it's a continued hearing. It's the first night for this application. Mm. So the property in question is number five, North Chop Lane. It has frontage on uh, the waterfront side on Vineyard Sound, which is considered land under the ocean. 
uh, working towards the site. There is also a coastal beach. There is an armored coastal bank, which is the topic of the application tonight. And there is land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, there's a blue line on the plan that represents the boundary between a VE-15 and an AE-13. Uh, VE-15 being seaward, AE-13 being landward. There's an existing single family dwelling, lawn areas, uh, typical landscape appurtenances. You may remember this uh, property. We did come before you um, a year or more, less than three years ago, um, and apply for and obtain an order of condition to do beach nourishment on the waterfront from the toe of the riprap in the beach area. We teamed up with the Woods Hole Group and uh, you issued an order of conditions for the beach nourishment. Um, way back when, uh, maybe uh, Commissioner Bird may have been on the commission that time, uh, you uh, approved the teardown rebuild of this uh, house. And at that time, uh, there was a requirement for mitigation planting and the mitigation planting was proposed in these lighter green areas um, that sort of uh, bracket the property. You can see the lighter green area to the, uh, I guess it's to the west and then also on the east side. So um, sometime between when we uh, applied for and obtained that order of conditions to do the beach nourishment and this application, the mitigation planting that was originally uh, approved disappeared. Um, and I hadn't been to the site until uh, sometime shortly before the original hearing to stake it. And uh, we discovered that like a day or two before the hearing. So we, uh, Jen had contacted me about that concern. So I continued the hearing so that I could revise the plan and show the areas on the plan that were required to be mitigation planting and um, also noted on the plan that the areas shaded in green uh, previously required mitigation would be reestablished as part of this application. Um, I, I can't explain why. I can tell you that Mrs. McDevitt is getting older and she's an absentee uh, property owner. In fact, her, uh, her son just recently moved back here from Ireland to to manage her affairs, so um, I, kept, I don't have an explanation. All I can do is show you that uh, we intend to replant it um, as a, to show good faith. So that being said, um, the actual application and the permit before you is a request to rebuild the existing riprap that exists on the site. The riprap along the shoreline has been here for decades, as well as uh, other riprap's both east and west of the property that have uh, basically armored the whole shoreline facing Vineyard Sound. And um, the property manager and the Woods Hole Group uh, thought it would be best that prior to doing beach nourishment activities that we should take a closer look at the riprap. Uh, they were concerned because there were some subsidences behind the riprap, which typically means that there's soil piping through the voids. S uh, through tidal action is drawing soil from the upper part. And when you see settlement at the top of a riprap, that means that it's possibly could, you know, fail at any time or, or what we call creeping failures, settlement can happen in different areas. Um, the erosion on the land, on the seaward side is such that the toe stones are starting to become exposed and the toe stones are starting to uh, lean forward and the wall is starting to show signs. In addition, right adjacent on this property to the west, um, in this area where I'm trying to circle um, with the mouse, I'm sure the staff is aware of this, but there's a, <coughs> there's a huge blowout and a riprap here that the property owner has chosen not to address uh, in the near term. They do have plans to file an application with you to fix that, but that caused concern for Mrs. McDevitt combined with the starting to see symptoms on her wall 
she thinks it's best to invest in rebuilding the riprap before embarking on the beach nourishment activities. Um, so we're here tonight to ask permission to rebuild this riprap. Um, the construction access will be through the site, the same access that was utilized and proposed for the beach nourishment. The riprap will be rebuilt uh, using the same stones and possibly supplementing. There's a cross section on the plan that I'm gonna zoom into uh, that shows a typical cross section. You're very familiar with uh, riprap cross sections. There's toe stones that are proposed to be installed a minimum of four feet below the beach. And the slope of the armor will be as it is today, which is about one and a quarter to one. It will be lined with um, broken stone, bedding stone. It'll also be lined with filter cloth. And the, um, the construction will be performed in manageable sections so that um, no part of the uh, wa uh, coastal bank is exposed uh, overnight. So there'll be a section done at a time, uh, either from the east to west or west to east. And no heavy equipment or will be on the beach. Uh, if there is anything, uh, no heavy equipment will be on the beach overnight as a certainty. Um, it's likely that all the work will be performed from the top. There may be a need to have some equipment during times of low tide at the toe of the bank, but all equipment will be off the beach and stored in an upland location overnight. The hydraulic uh, oils in the equipment will be uh, environmental friendly hydraulic oils. The work will progress in manageable sections. Um, there is a proposal to do granite steps uh, in the wall. That was actually proposed in the beach nourishment uh, application, but it's it will it would be done done at the time that the rip wraps reconstructed. So this is a typical rip wrap rebuild. <coughs> This, this riprap is currently under review by Chapter 91. In fact, um, it was discussed during the beach nourishment project. Uh, there was a question as to whether it was uh, licensed on, in accordance with Chapter 91. This, this uh, stone groin to the east is licensed and the license number is referenced. This uh, riprap was not licensed and it's likely that it wasn't licensed because mean high water when it was constructed did not make contact with it. But due to the erosion and sea level rise, now mean high water touches the bottom of the wall. So we've advanced an application with DEP to license this. So licensing and, and maintaining the riprap is um, currently before DEP, we expect the license to be issued imminently. Um, we just, we just um, got some uh, correspondence back that sort of clue you in that they're on the final stretch of their review, so we're hoping to get that soon. I think that pretty much sums it up, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mike, go through your construction methodology again. They're doing the wall from the top? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to do it in manageable sections from top to bottom, working from one end, and then proceeding to the other end so that only a section at a time is exposed and as it's built they'll remove rocks and then they'll continue to build. So it won't be from top to bottom, it'll be from entirely one section from toe to top at one time and then progress either in an easterly direction or a westerly direction. Okay, so you don't have to build a sand ramp, you don't have to put machines on the beach. There may be equipment on the beach, but it would only be during times of low tide. How are you uh, gonna get the equipment on the beach? When they disassemble the wall, they can ramp down where the rocks have been removed and then they can build up. And then they, they may also have an actual ramp um, with sand to get up and down from the top of the wall to the bottom. Okay, we're gonna have to know how much sand they're gonna put on there to do that because I do believe in the, and this goes to my next point, I do believe there was their original beach nourishment plan they asked for a certain amount and this board did not grant that specific amount, mm -hmm. which goes to how that plan is depicted right now. Mm -hmm. That beige area that you have, what, what, what is that? 
That's that just, is the coastal beach. That's that just showing me? that's showing the area where the coastal beach is. It's not ha, has no relationship to like it the is. distance or the amount of sand. Um, I do believe the last mm -hmm. plan you gave us. I thought the coastal beach was proposed to go out to the end of that small groin, and the board said no. Right. So why is the coastal beach depicted all the way out to that end of thing? You have mean low water. That's the start of land under ocean. That shouldn't be depicted on that plan as coastal beach then, correct? Well, the words coastal beach point for mean low water. Hi, but you still have it colored in that nice little beige, so it's a little bit misleading to me sitting over here looking at that, thinking that's all coastal beach or on my plan where you have all the little dots on it. You kind of see my concern there? Yeah, there's no intention to do any beach nourishment other than what the original order showed. So I, if you need me to correct the plan. I, I do. I, I actually, I think I do. I can do I that. Think I do. And I do need to determine now that you're saying that there might be a sand ramp going down there. I'm assuming that if they're using that sand ramp, they're going to leave the sand on the beach. Yep. Then we need to know the cubic yardage of the sand ramp because that's going to relate into that whole beach number. <coughs> sure. That's so easy. they're not going to be able to <coughs> put a substantial amount of sand down for the sand ramp and then provide oh. the beach not respect. You see what I'm getting I at? Yes. So I, I could I should have caught this earlier and I apologize, Mike, but I might I might have to have you calculate how much yeah. sand is going in for the sand ramp. Sure, that's fine. That's okay. not a problem. And it just kind of struck me as I'm looking at that and the way you have it depicted with the beige, it just kind of I was going like this in my brain going, huh. Yeah, we had asked for a lot more originally yeah. and um there and was I a condition to reduce it. So this I apologize if this is misleading. Whatever yeah. the original order required is what we're only allowed Yeah, and to I just think that that plan's a bit misleading, and we're, we're trying to, as you know, tighten up the, these plans a bit. Mm -hmm. And I know that Tara Tara's presentation to the board from Woods Hole Group said that the beach nourishment was going to go out to the end of that little groin. You were so glad one of my commissioners is not here because of probably her head would be spinning right now if she saw that. But um, <coughs> I think it's just a bit misleading, and if you could correct that, and then do they have a contractor for the wall yet? Uh, not yet. So if um, we may have to, you may have to talk to some contractors to see what the volume of sand is going to be required to build these, to build these ramps to get onto the beach. I Just because this I is kind of a restricted an, site to get down there. Sure. We're, 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 uh, we're expecting it to be Dale Briggs. Um, I can give you an estimate of that ramp sand yeah or I think can, that would if be if you'd helpful. want it as a before you close the hearing or be submitted as a condition I think before we close the hearing just so the board can can do that I'm sorry yeah that's fine I'm happy to give you that info okay. and I can also make sure that the uh, yeah and unfortunately it's no, it'll probably have to be on the third that's fine okay I don't know how fast I want to jump on this I don't think they're jumping on it that quickly okay but like I said, it just my I started to think about it just looking at the way that that beige area isn't depicted. I'm like, huh. So all these questions just came up as you were going through your presentation. <coughs> yeah, so we can. We that's can something that I'd like to like to see. Sure. Okay, we can we you. can revise that and I can give you the volume estimate. All right. Sorry about that, Mike. Not a problem. Uh, yeah. OK. And then pull. Oh, that's it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Brendan. Mm -hmm. Will that septic be OK in the construction access? Yes, the septic um, will be protected with steel plates and vehicular traffic. The, tr the excavator can walk over that. Right. And what about the, uh, the, it's almost like a pergola. Yeah, pergola. I want to say swim platform, but it's at the top of the wall. With a little pergola on top. We have a picture of it. Okay. Yeah, it's a little nice thing on the top. Just a platform at the top of the wall. Yeah, it's good. It's 
Oh, those are I see. Oh, those are just railings. That's just a platform at the top of the wall. I think it's a temporary set of stairs that they use to get down, and the new granite stairs will eliminate the need for that. They just pull them up in the off season. Oh, they pull the old stairs yeah. up because all we're yeah. looking at is the the platform at the top, not the stairs going down. Yeah, they down. take the stairs off seasonally so they okay. don't get damaged. All right. Now I think I remember the board permitting something like that mm -hmm. a while ago. Okay. Yes. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Peter. No further questions. No further questions. And thank you for uh, your help with the carousel project. Thank you. I have some questions. You guys never go off agenda. <coughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't rescind my moving my on uh, moving on oh. let's you know Mike I have a yes. couple of questions yes um, well first is for Jen is there a time of year restriction on any of these I don't think you have a time of year restriction on this do you Mike no for the not even for the beach nourishment I don't not think you did no not that I was in the order of conditions no and I don't even think there was one DMF. for DMF either yeah. okay no my next question is uh, how long do you think this will take? Once they commence construction, this is probably a two-week project. Okay. But like I said, they'll ne they'll they manage it so it's in everyone's best interest not to leave an exposed uh, bank. So the the concept is you do only what you can do in a day and continue to work. But from start to finish, it's probably be a, about a two-week process. Yeah. I, well, I, what what I'm thinking is. Try to avoid fall storms or winter storms. Yes. Yeah. At this point, it's likely to wait until I don't I don't know this, but it's likely to wait till after summer, like late summer, early fall. Hurricane season. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps it should wait till after well, hurricane season. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just you know you can go yeah. ahead and do it, but I mean that's well yeah that's what I would well do I know they don't want to disrupt the summer. Um, yeah, and by the time they get done it, in the summer. right, and you know, hurricane season ends like what October? Mm, yep, November. So you know, that's probably what will happen, but I can't say for certain. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. License, I asked about. Okay, um, two questions about this mitigation planning. Mm -hmm. One campaign. One is. Do we know what it is? I mean, you're going to put in what I, I can't answer there? that. I apologize for that. Okay. Um, in your file, I meant to mention this, when the house was originally approved, there was a landscape plan by Heather Wright, who was hired at the time that the house was proposed to be permitted, and it's part of the record. I can provide copies of that if you don't have them in your file, but it was a very detailed, specific um, mitigation plan with all plants that would be logical and typical and on your uh, recommended list but it is in your file if not i can give you copies mike could you just uh, because that the house file for this is buried in archives yeah. somewhere so if you could provide a copy of that for the board for the next hearing that would be a little compliance issue most likely yeah we'd have to go and look so what happened you said they did this at the year is that the word you used? I'm, I'm not putting words in your mouth. Sometimes Mike has this problem with some of his clients. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I can't I'm explain it. Question. I, mean, <laughs> I, I think remember the time the whole buffer was cut. I, mean, you didn't I believe, it. I'm going to say, Jamie, I do believe, because I believe Mark did the compliance on this. I believe this did get compliance. Don't quote me, but we can definitely oh, double I can, check. I can tell you that because I, I, don't, I don't know if agonize is the right word, but I had several meetings with Mark on site about this. And there was some of the plants were not surviving, and it was a it was a it was a it was a battle to make that happen. And eventually, it got established, and it was approved, and a compliance was issued. <coughs> that I know. What happened after that, I can't. I'm, I'd be speculating. It happened in the last year or two because when I was before you for the beach nourishment project, it was it was there. It was there. Right. Yeah. I I honestly think that in Mrs. McDevitt just 
remove them. I don't. I can't explain why. <laughs> maybe I, she, I really maybe can't. she had a rogue uh, landscape person. Let's let's just throw that one yeah. out. At any rate, they're not that there. My they're question. not there, Jamie. Uh, so you. <laughs> that's okay then. You can interrupt. Me. <laughs> so, you, Steve can too. So. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so but I have a question for since it got compliance with what was there. That doesn't necessarily have to be put back in, does it? Couldn't you change it? Couldn't we change it if we wanted? You could. That's why we're going to have Mike give us copies and Ms. Wright's landscape plan so that you can review and we can change it if yeah, you like. Yeah, that's what I'm just w suggesting. Different it. plants. Or yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I just don't want to see a a bigger growth. Growth. Yep. No, nope, we'll look at well, it. This plant was pretty diverse, okay. um, but. It's in your so file, but I can about. give you copies. Yes. Do you feel like you're in Iowa in the cornfield? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so I, I have one more question, and then then I'm then I'm done. I don't believe you. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a shed right in the middle of the mitigation planning. Yeah. So, is there a story about that shed? The shed. <coughs> Damn plants got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> this this shed. Right here used to be over here. For some reason, maybe at the time that she moved the mitigation planting, <laughs> she decided to move the shed. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. So there's going to have to be some kind of little alteration? I, I would suggest that I add a note to the plan that says existing shed to be relocated. Back well, to I mean, I don't care if you keep it there, but you have to add that much extra. Well, I think it's better to remove it from the buffer. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't see the value of it being there. It doesn't need if to be If your buffer's there. even gonna remain there. So, so we'll see, we'll, we'll look at how this plans. Um, I have no further questions at this time. Excellent. Kevin. I'm sorry, I have one question uh, and it concerns the, the uh, mitigation plantings that I assume we, you, you, we're getting back, is mm -hmm. that it? Yes. So I'm assuming they'll be put somewhere else other than where they're indicated currently. I mean, either that or you're expecting someone to lift it up over, in other words, how is he gonna mow the lawn, in, you know, between the patio and the grill platform without going through the uh, rye, so to speak? Um, I, I want to make it clear. Can you see this green, this, this kind of olive green color? Yeah. yeah. That's, that was the approved uh, alignment of the mitigation planting originally. Yeah. So between that and the house is open lawn. And on the, on the, the other side. end, the other or side. Eastern. Go around. There you go. Right here. Yeah. yeah. This is a blue stone grill platform. I'm the mower going over that is what Kevin's asking. I see, yeah. Well, this is, you can walk right through here, so. Which floor? It's flush with the ground, yeah. Okay. Okay, but practically, is a landscaper gonna take his riding lawn mower over someone's grill platform when their grill is there? No, they'll probably mow this area and then they'll probably do everything from the other side. I, I don't know how they would mow that. Well, they're talking I'm about like a Gavin, rogue landscape Gavin, uh, person, remember? Yeah, and what got my attention is that, uh, on our maps, I think, or one of our maps, uh, that little uh, nine foot section well, on the, the patio, patio is, is colored green. So we thought, you know. I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying on that part. See where the patio See is? See where the patio is? Here? The bottom. No, no. no, no oh, over here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this, this yeah. here. Yeah. So we might have to do a little adjustment on this, I think is what you're suggesting, on the alignment of it. I can do that. Especially and I actually what I can yeah. do is um, okay. I'll zoom in on this a little closer. This area right here, I can I can modify this so this is this space and I can why I can I can enhance it over here a little bit to make up for that. And I can also uh, I can I can take that area and I can I can thicken this out in this location to make up for both of those. So that the end result is the same area. You might put in a 
put real temp to because given given what happened the last time that's a good idea yeah sure her turn apparently <laughs> i'm working with kevin <laughs> kevin you good i'm screwed <coughs> in more than <coughs> one you're finished right yes just a bird so it might be prudent to have some sort of Anti mowing barrier between your plant and single rail fence. Yeah. Single oh, rail that's fence. That's what I said. Single yeah. rail okay. fence. Yep. The hearing aid went out. Okay. So I have no other questions. Sorry, I'll turn towards you the next time. <laughs> what? So at the request of the applicant, I make a motion for a continuance until April 3rd. When? April 3rd? April 3rd. Well, I heard that's the date that Jen mentioned, April, April 3rd. 3rd. Is that okay yeah. with you? I mean, it's your, you're the one who's requesting it. Oh, no, it's going to be okay with Mike. <laughs> and Mike knows why. <laughs> uh, what if I say that? Because, right. because the March 27th hearing is full. <coughs> oh, no, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my motion. Okay, do second. We have, we have a motion and a second for a continuance. Any further discussion? Comments from the one public figure in the, in the house? Right. Chance. Uh, call for the vote. All those in favor of continuing the hearing, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Where did my thingy oh, go? This one. Yes. Is this the quorum for this one? Steve, Jamie, Kevin, and Courtney. Yes, it is Steve, Jamie, Kevin, and Courtney. That's why Kevin is here tonight, because Steve is needed for the quorum this evening. Responsibilities. Last Ooh. up, order of conditions. Nathan Holcomb, 270 yeah. Stepawisset Road, Falmouth, Mass. I'm going to have to talk to Peter because we're running late. Jeremy? Okay. Um, so we got the restoration plan. They were doing the patio, that oddly configured little patio that I didn't quite understand. And then we got a revised plan. So there are some proposed additions. Um, then we have the, the wetland restoration. So basically invasive removal, and then the mitigation for the proposed impervious surface around the wetland, and then the, the meadow. And then I think a couple of you had stated you wanted to see an increased shrub community within that meta. Need a little bit more guidance on but I think, uh, how large of a shrub community you'd like to see. There was also a comment about uh, the roses. That there should have been fewer roses. Yes, there's two, yes, yes. You are correct. Um, and I did see that. Yep, we're gonna get rid of one of the roses, so remove either pasture rose or Virginia rose. She said she, she wants, wants Virginia rose. Okay, remove pasture rose and replace. Yep. Um, In the rail fence. It's going to be monitoring. Going to be three feet on center. They didn't specify that. Now, in the meadow area, do you want to see 25% of that meadow area converted into a, a shrub community? 50% of that meadow area? Converted into a shrub community. I, I need some guidance. Adding a few more shrubs just, I understand what you guys are getting at, but I need a little bit more guidance on that. And Is there a rule of thumb for a percentage? Um, no, because we usually we'd have this all being more of a shrub community. Um, I think I 
isn't a view issue here. There's no view issue. Um, it was a kick issue. No. Okay. I'd say 25, 30% within that meadow community because you really didn't give a lot of like very strong feedback. I think that that would be appropriate. Okay. okay. What do you 25? think? Yeah, yeah, I'd go 25. Yeah, that's 25? 25%. Partly. 25% in addition to the mitigation required right. by that, 25% of the meadow area needs to have um, a shrub community. We can scatter it throughout. We can add it around the wetland area. How would you like it done, or would you like it scattered throughout? I think it's better concentrated around the wetland. I agree. Okay. It's going to provide more habitat value. Okay. And I also think it'll make it easier for them to control invasives. Right. Yep. They're going to look better. Okay. Then I'll move to uh, accept as discussed. And it has to be, we need a revised plan. With a revised plan. Yep. <laughs> Great. So, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Oh, wait, and one more thing. You want a single rail fence? I think this was discussed. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's easy enough. Okay. Do we have a second? Yeah. Yeah. Who's got a second? Okay. Okay. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody? Yeah. Uh, Betsy has something to say. <laughs> Big surprise. I mean, um, <laughs> One is um if you get no love sometimes. Uh, oh, I consider this more I know that may be from Steve. It's pure love. <laughs> pure love. <laughs> <laughs> um I'd like to ask a, a, an endorsement so that we can send a letter from us to NEPA to support the Rod and Club project. Oh, yeah. They have their NEPA uh, the oh. meeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When do they Friday. have that meeting? Friday. I'll, Friday. I'll go. Okay, I'll please go. do. Yep. What's because on Friday? Friday. 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 There's a oh, it's due on Friday. Yeah. Is it there? Yeah. So could I? I'm, the, I'm the liaison on the project for the CPC. Just. Oh, could I have your endorsement? Oh, I'd love to give you my endorsement. It's a great project. Do we need a motion to that effect? Yeah, I'd, I figured that was I'd move motion. that we endorse the Rod and Glen Club's application to MEP. Second. And Betsy, you'll be attending the NEPA review on that. Okay. Yeah. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Unanimous. One more thing. Just <laughs> and this because Steve Steve was gonna say so I can mm -hmm. tell he was gonna say it. I'm waiting. Tomorrow, six thirty. CPC. Right, six o'clock. If you want to hear the meeting in advance. Oh, look at that! What are we doing? Is everyone going to see? Civil, civil defense room. And, and one more thing. Yeah. I'll move to adjourn. Yeah. Second. second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody aye. that opposed can stay. <laughs> You're done.